Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing the series on what if Saitama was in My Hero Academia. This is part 6, so if you haven't seen the previous parts, go check those out. They'll be in the description below. But without further ado, let's begin part 6. Before the two classes go on to their training camp for the summer, Kaminari and Mineta come up with the idea to go train by endurance swimming at the school pool. However, we know what they were actually planning. To cover their tracks and make it seem more believable, the two invite Deku. Mr. Aizawa Ar agrees to their request, and the three become excited. Turns out, Deku calls everyone, and the two's plan quickly falls apart like in canon. The men do their swimming, when Tenya comes up with the idea to have a competition. The first group is Mineta, Tokoyame, Koda, Bakugo, and Kaminari. Bakugo uses his flying technique and wins his heat. The second group is Saitama, Shoto, Sero, Ayame. The whistle blows and Saitama zips in the water and dashes over to the other side winning his heat. Everyone still gets shocked on how Saitama is able to move so fast, which of course pisses Bakugo off. The last heat is Deku, Tenya, Ojiro, and Shoji. Deku, using his quark, beats Tenya again in a close race. The, final are, the finals are Bakugo, Saitama, and Deku. Yazurozu blows the whistle, but Bakugo and Deku fall into the water due to Mr. Aizawa stealing their quarks. However, Saitama is able to power through to the end of the pool. When he finishes, he looks at his classmates and they all have a look of puzzlement and confusion on their faces. See, the class always believed that Saitama's quark was super strength or something close along those lines. However, this is clearly not the case, and Saitama explains his quirkless origin story to his classmates and his teacher. Everyone confusingly, and not really believing Saitama, agree with his statement, ending the day at the pool. A couple days later, it's time for both classes to head to their training camp. When they're about halfway there, the bus stops and the class is greeted by two members of the Wild Wild Pussycats. Before the class knows it, they are sent on the task of moving on foot to the camp while having to battle rock-like creatures on the way. Saitama here, seeing that he gets food when he gets there, puts on the jets and arrives within 10 minutes. In terms of the rest of the class, they manage to get there around 2 as Saitama would smash the rock creatures in his path, which would in turn make the class's life a lot easier. Anyway, Mandalay introduces Koda, and when Deku introduces himself, he still gets punched. The class gets their stuff off the bus and ready for dinner. Saitama enjoys his food peacefully, while everyone else wolves down their food due to them having to work much, much harder than him. After the class eats, they decide to go to the springs where Mineta tries to watch the girls from class 1A. Sadly, his attempt fails as he gets hit down by Koda. Then, like in canon, Koda falls and Deku catches him. The two cats tell Deku about Koda's parents, and like in the anime, Deku sympathizes. The next day at the training camp arrives early. For Saitama's training, he starts off in Tiger's camp, but quickly graduates as he is able to send him flying in an instant. Mr. Aizawa walks over and tells Saitama that he can do his own training. This excites Saitama, as he hasn't had a challenge since he's been at UA, and everyone in Class 1A watches Saitama as they expect him to do something crazy. Sadly, this never happens. At dinner, Deku notices that Koda has left for dinner. Like in canon, he brings him food and uses the secret talk no jutsu. The next day comes early again, and the intermediate group is very sleepy, as they've been going around it at around the clock. Kirishima makes fun of them, saying that failing would never happen to him. After training and dinner, the two classes get to go up against each other in a competition to see which class can scare each other better. Since there is an even number of people, Saitama is paired with Yayorozu, and Deku is paired with Kirishima. Like in canon, the camp gets attacked, and while Deku goes to save Koda, Kirishima goes with Tenya and the other students back to the facility. In terms with Saitama and Yayorozu, they are both bet by the Nomu. Yayorozu, scared by this, freaks out, but Saitama, believing it's part of Class 1B's prank, continues moving forward. Saitama is then launched by the creature, sending Saitama flying into multiple trees. Yayorozu 
and Awas manage to put a tracker on the Nomu's leg before Saitama returns. When he does, he notices that Asua is carrying Yayurozu as they as they are chased by the Nomu. Saitama swoops in and demolishes the upper half of the Nomu. During this time, sadly Bakugo is still captured, putting an end to the summer camp. At the facility where the Nomus are kept, All for One notices that the Nomu he lent to Shigaraki and his crew was missing. After searching for some time, he notices a pile of blood where the Nomu is supposed to be. This puts a chill down All for One's back as he stares at the bodiless Nomu. And that is going to do it for part 6. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, hit, you know, all of that stuff that YouTubers usually ask for. If you want to keep seeing more of this, comment it down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace.